All right. How's everyone doing today? Mm, I'm chronically sleepy, but that's not that, that's not anything now. Chronically hungry, also not new. Okay. So the homework number six is due today. So to start with, does anyone have any questions and lingering issues, any complaints about this particular assignment before we end it for today? Can you go to 13? 13. Ah, yes.
y component and an x component. as an x component and a y component and ultimately find those components and add them together you will get the components for vector C. In this particular case, you are basically ultimately subtracting them. Um, I say add because if we define our system right, a y will be a positive number and b y will be a negative number. Ultimately though, you could, if you wanted to say subtract, like mathematically what you did is correct. There's no issue with what you did. If you have a framework that works for you, that is fine. Writing it in XY form is a way of describing it as a vector because you list specifically its vector X leg and its vector Y leg, and that tells you where the end point is. So for right now, I am accepting the answers in coordinate x, y form. That is okay for every single vector on this assignment, unless it says otherwise, find the hypotenuse in the angle. And that will be true in 1500 as well, unless I specify, unless I, or unless our homework web tool specifies, give me um, magnitude and direction coordinate form. 
So I've got this on screen to help draw 1415 because it helps keep to scale. So in 14 and 15, someone's going to be walking. We're going to start at the origin and then walk three blocks east, followed by five blocks north. And then, I guess it has to get confusing somewhere, um, the equivalent of eight blocks at an angle of 35 degrees south of west. So south of west means that we're going to start looking west, and we're going to tilt in the southern direction. So we start with west, and we're going to tilt 35 degrees south from there. And I know because I've drawn this before, eight blocks in that direction should be about that long. And so, ultimately, what we would like out of this is the line that I've drawn in green. Now, in terms of number 14, if you were asked for a picture, that's your picture. For 14, this is the answer. For 15, we are then going to take this picture and apply algebra to it. Because the definition of physics, okay, one, some people could define physics as insanity. I define physics as Explaining the universe with numbers and math. So let's take this piece of the universe and explain it with math. So this green line here could be described by an x component and a y component. The y component is going to be very small, full disclosure. But it is not zero. It is a not zero number. And in order to find these components, we need to add the other three component vectors together. And since we can only add x with x and y with y, we need to list all of them in x and y form. So vector one, three miles east. We can write that as a three comma zero. Vector two, five miles north. You can write that with a marker that still has ink in it, hopefully. That is zero comma five. And of course, we end up with one on an angle, and we have to do a little trick. So, for the eight blocks, And I have to also divide that into its x and y legs. Thankfully, we know for this sort of imaginary triangle that we have drawn, we know its hypotenuse and one of its non-right angles. So we can use those two things to find both of the other legs. So for vector three, which I've drawn in purple, figure out its x and its y, we're going to do, if we do sine of 35 degrees, that will give us the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. I'll start by writing that as O over H, and then I will fill in Y over 8. If we do cosine of 35, that tells us adjacent leg over hypotenuse, so A over H our purposes is x over 8. And we solve for those pieces. The y leg is, is I think, 4.58. And the x leg is 6.55.
And so those are the, that is the third pair of things that we need to add to the others. are positive and what directions are negative. So vector 1, we're pointing east, east is positive x. Vector 2, we're pointing north, north is positive y. Vector 3 points southwest. South is negative y, west is negative x. So both of these need to have a negative sign out on them. Same over here. That will ultimately affect our answer. If we didn't put those on there, we would get something that looks a lot different to what the actual reality is. But we add the x's together, so 3 plus 0 minus 6.5 is our x component. Our y component is 0 plus 5 minus 4.58. Sometimes the point of the question might be to draw the picture, but if the point is not drawing the picture, one will be provided. I will try to provide more detail on pictures. Yeah. Yes. We wouldn't have to draw the imaginary dollar triangle. Because to me, I didn't think so. For, so for the, and I admit this is a little confusing because there's 18 is written here twice, even though one of them is supposed to be 19. For the first 18, draw a triangle showing how those two vectors add together. And that triangle is the same shape and is congruent to. Like it would be. Yes, it would. So that, side, that third side would be the vector. And this displacement triangle would be congruent with the velocities being added together in the other part, in the other kind. 
in the problem that should be called 19. I really need to check my numbering before I break this in the future. I was very careful with this next one. triangles in 18, but the, the image formed by the three vectors, the two vectors you're adding, and then their sum, do not create a right triangle with those three sides. I will, you know what, let's just, are we comfortable with this? Can I erase this? The image formed by the two vectors and their sum don't form a right triangle. However, I can rewrite any vector as the hypotenuse of a right triangle, is what I was trying to get to. Yeah, I was so confused. I was like, do I still use the sign? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, 18. 18 the first and 18 the second. So in the original 18, at the bottom of the leftmost column, we are adding the displacements we found in 16 and 17. Those displacements are number 16 tells us 12 miles east, we call that four squares. And then, eighteen miles at sixty eight degrees north of west. So Origin 68 degrees north of west, we start west and then we tilt 68 degrees north. So it's going to point in this direction, and that is 18 miles. two vectors that we are adding together. Yes? This might be random, sometimes stupid, but how do you know when to add another origin and then make, or versus make a line and like invert the line? Is it only when it's negative? Inverting the line is only when, I, when it says like subtracting one vector from another. Okay. So if 
And that's not a way that I will commonly ever ask you that question. So 12 and 13 are the only times you would draw the starting one and then reverse it. Okay. Here, for all vectors being added together graphically, you are drawing how vectors add together. Yeah. I recommend drawing them tip to tail. So you draw one of them fully from the origin, then you draw the second one starting at the first one's arrowhead going out from there. So the way that I do it when I have to put a new angle measurement in, I put a new origin at the end of that first vector to help me get my aim in for where they give one more point. So for all vector addition, if you are drawing the vectors, Technically, at the end of, like at the arrowhead of every vector, that's a new origin for the next one that you're adding. So I find it useful to add these little points that help me get my aim in through to the angles. And this drawing is a little closer to scale than ones that I've made in the past. So. The vector that we are ultimately going to be looking for here is this purple line. Because if someone was to drive this distance from 16 and then this distance from 17, this is where they would end up. So using the graphical method, this is the answer. So for 18, Yes, so for the problem that is meant to be number 18, this is the final answer. This is just, graphically speaking, where one ends up after making this drive. 19, I'm just going to call it 19 from now on, number 19 asks us to instead, using the mathematical method, add the two velocities from 17 and 16 together. So we're still adding vectors, we're just adding velocities together instead of displacements. Do not erase your pictures. I'm just reusing the ones up here. The thing about velocity vectors is they, well, they're in the same direction as the displacement vectors. And since we were driving the same amount of time in each of those axes, this triangle is proportional to the velocity triangle. All vectors, you can draw a triangle and add them together. All For any vector, you can draw a triangle and add it together with any vector of the same type. Even though you can't really visually see a velocity triangle, you can still draw one and use it to add velocities together. And for this particular case, the velocity triangle for number 19 is the same shape and the same orientation as the displacement triangle. So for working number 19, don't erase the previous picture, don't edit it picture, but this is the picture that I would draw for number 19 to help me solve it. There you go so far. Okay. And very similar to previous questions we looked at today. You can only add x to x and y to y. So the second vector, the red one, would need to be divided up into its components before we can add them together. And adding the x's together and the y's together would give us the x and y components of our final answer velocity vector. So.
vector one is entirely in the x-axis, we can just write that as 40 comma zero. Vector two has some as components in either axis, so let's try to find those numbers and go ahead and tell you that the x component will be negative because we for, for this particular leg of the trip, we turned and we're going back in the negative x direction, but we're still going positive north, so only the x leg here will be negative. And then, I need to find markers. We add them together to find the vector component of the sum of those two velocities. x-axis for vector 1, and this fast in the x-axis for vector 2. Those combine to put us this far in the x-axis. So we have one big positive, one smaller negative. They're going to add up to one slightly smaller positive. So if I was to flatten this and remove the y-axis for a second, just to put in the just to look at x-axis stuff. I think, I will take this up at the end of the period. On your way out is fine. 
so we can get a pile on the way out. If you want to take the rest of the period to finish up anything that you, anything that you don't have completely finished yet, just based on all the stuff we talked about, please proceed. Talk together, talk to me, make sure you're finished and satisfied, and have it in, in a file by the end of the period. have any any other specific needs or questions about this particular assignment. But I do want to begin talking about the next one. I do have it ready for you guys. It is more of the same. It is, in my opinion, simpler, actually. A little more streamlined. So make sure you do have one of these before you exit. Um, Assignment seven is we will be looking at vectors, but also looking at units, mainly converting units, because we're now getting well and thoroughly into things we're going to be doing at the start of 1500, and we're going to be starting with units and one-dimensional vectors. Units, because unit conversions are going to show up for the rest of your potential math and science careers. You do have to convert them correctly, or else you will crash a probe into the moon. No, Mars. We lost millions of dollars because someone didn't convert units right and the rover crashed into Mars. Maybe we lost satellites because of that too. So I take it some of you haven't heard this story. So I am going to put up on screen the next assignment so that you can see the unit conversion questions I'm talking about. Assignment 7 is pretty cleanly divided down the middle into first half, 1 through 14, which is about various unit conversions, metric units, etc. I need to use the metric system again. And then the rest will be vector questions similar to what we've worked, but starting to work in acceleration as well. For the unit conversion questions, the reason we are concentrating on this now, and we'll continue to concentrate on this for as long as you are taking physics classes at this school, is because units are very, very important. If you write the wrong unit, your answer is Technically, like if you work the problem right, you get the correct in depth integer value, but you write the correct unit, that can make your answer technically wrong. Because if you were asked for how many miles is this, and you write, if you're asked, if the answer is 10 miles, but you answer 10 meters, 10 meters is a lot shorter distance than 10 miles. So if you were working in a scientific uh, location and you someone read your work and said okay we need to make this 10 meters long when it's supposed to be 10 miles long something bad is going to happen and you'd think people would look at that and check more often but they don't when when people get schematics they build what's on the schematic oftentimes without much of a second thought so when making the schematic one has to be very 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 careful a specific case where something went wrong in that regard was one of the landers we sent to, fairly certain it was Mars. Um, when you send something to Mars, you have to give it pre-programmed instructions. You cannot remote control it down yourself because there's a 30 minute input lag sending a signal to Mars and then getting it back. You do not we have rovers, we do control them there, but it's not one-to-one. -one. You don't press forward and then it goes forward. You press forward and then an hour later you receive the video footage of it rolling forwards. We do not have fine enough control to land it manually. It has to be sent with pre-programmed instructions about very specifically, after this amount of time, at this elevation, deploy parachute, deploy boosters, and don't crash into the ground. And when those instructions were being coded in, one scientist was working with the metric system in meters. Another scientist was working in the imperial system with feet. For a sense of scale, one foot is about yay long. One meter is about three of those long. So the computer 
did its math, it was doing its thinking in meters, and it was then comparing that math to the pre-programmed instructions in feet. And because there was a bad conversion there, it didn't deploy its parachute at the right elevation. It thought it was further from the ground than it was when it deployed the chute, and so it crashed into the surface, and that's millions of dollars we're never getting back. So, unit conversions. The way that I like to do them, and you do not have to employ exactly the same method, because I assume you've been converting units before in other math and science classes, you have a way that works for you, please, please proceed. Your work doesn't have to match mine, but the way that I um, is with something I call the railroad method. So just looking at the first couple of questions, let's say we've got 25 kilometers, 56 kilometers in one hour, and 767 miles per one hour. These are all pretty standard units of measure. We have a unit of distance, a unit of velocity, and a different unit of velocity. And we're just told to convert them to some other different unit. So the way that I do that is I'm going to multiply it by a fraction. And that fraction is ultimately going to be equal to 1. You can multiply by 1, and that doesn't change the actual number. It's just going to change the unit attached to that number. So when converting kilometers to meters, the conversion there is 1 kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Time to remember the metric system, our metric prefixes, kilo, hecta, deca, Deci, deci, centi, milli. All of them are spaced a multiplier of 10 apart. So if you're going from kilometers to meters, you want to move the decimal point one, two, three places to the right. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. I could rewrite this as a fraction. One is equal to 1,000 meters over one kilometer. I divide one kilometer to the other side and I get this fraction. This is then equal to one, which means I can multiply anything in the universe by this, and that doesn't change what it actually equals. So I'm going to multiply this by our original unit, 1,000 meters times one kilometer. And if you divide one unit by itself, it cancels. So ultimately, multiplying by 1,000 will take us into meters. So the correct answer here should be 23,000 meters. These other ones are just slightly more complicated. But I employ the same method, bless you. For number two, we want to convert kilometers per hour into meters per second. So kilometers has to become meters, much in the same way. We multiply by the same fraction, that will cancel out kilometers and leave us with meters. We also want to convert hours into seconds. And the fraction there is one hour is equal to 36,000 seconds. That's just 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. 60 times 60 is 3,600. Safety one step. And that would leave us with units of meters per second. And then number three. Thing. We want to turn miles per hour into meters per second. So one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. 
I'll say one more step and call that 1,609 meters. And the same thing with hours, one hour over 360 seconds, sorry, 3,600 seconds. And I call this the railroad because this vaguely resembles railroad tracks, at least in some people's opinion. This will, this tactic, as long as you know the conversion between the two units, will help you convert any one thing into any other thing. So, first half of the next assignment is just conversions. We've already looked at one through three. Four through nine is entirely about the metric system. Has anyone not used the metric system before? Does that mean everyone has used the metric system before? Okay, good. Um, so, we will come back to this next Wednesday. We will meet next Wednesday. We'll come back to it then. Uh, we're nearing the end and it's a Friday, so we don't want to keep you today. But, I do recommend grabbing the assignment and getting started, and if not on the weekend, at least next to school year. Oh wait, we have Tuesday off. Please enjoy that. Please take the next Wednesday. But this is, these are the main metric units, metric prefixes. They're all 10 times 10 apart from each other. And if you are taking notes, we go ahead and add kilo to mega to micro micro to nano. There are other prefixes beyond the King Henry chocolate milk ones, but after K and after kilo and milli, we stopped doing them in bases of 10 and started doing them in bases of 1,000. So one megameter is 1,000 times bigger than a kilometer, not 10 times bigger. Similarly, one micrometer is 1,000 times smaller than a millimeter, and one nanometer is 1,000 times smaller than a micrometer. We also ran out of English letters, so we had to start using Greek ones. That's going to come up a lot in every business class. We will come back to this on uh, Wednesday. So do please, on your way out, make sure I have your, your homework six. Grab a homework seven there in the file that already exists. Do begin looking at them. Make sure you can do the conversions. And, but, Main priority, do have a good weekend, do have a good Tuesday rest day. Thank you. I know I need it, I know you guys need it. Please sleep in. The whole planet has a whole lot of mental issues. More so than usual. It already happened. Now they're just worse.